Burning Sins, Chapter 2, Part 2 Coming out of the hedge maze to the last corner before the bridge, Nathan peeked around to find the drawbridge was heavily guarded. Several squadrons were posted there, keeping the only way out on lockdown. Cursing under his breath, he rested against the wall, head hung in thought as he tried to come up with another way to escape. With the guards grouped up in his way and several more patrols behind him, he was beyond antsy. Only this last obstacle remained, and he was out of the thick of it. In his eagerness to move, he had unknowingly been standing in the open without aerial cover for far too long, and his heart stopped when he heard a tomboyish voice above call him out. There he is! He's down there! Nathan's attention shot upwards, the scion Pegasus pointing down at him from near the top of the castle. The guards standing at the gate all shifted their gazes towards the human. Their natural stance turned aggressive as they charged straight for him. When he realized that he was about to be assaulted from two different directions, both equally lethal, instincts took over, and he bolted away from the guards and the blue mare back towards the maze. Shoving and tearing down things such as statues, sculptures, and benches to slow his pursuers, he was pleasantly surprised to find even hardened veterans were slightly clumsy. One after another, they either fell, stumbled, or had to go around the fallen ornaments to continue the chase. Thankfully, Nathan managed to put some distance between himself and the guards to be able to lose them around the corner. But the same couldn't be said about the blue pegasus coming down from above. With a powerful beat of her wings, her large mass rammed into his already injured back, driving Nathan into the dirt. Growling in a searing writhe of pain, the human felt his body spasm from the collision, momentarily unable to get back up from the strike. The body that tackled him swept itself back into the air, laughing as she pointed down at him. <laughs> Stupid changeling. Ain't no way I'm letting some bug playing dress up outrun me. Nathan glared at the pony when he heard that name, that species, Changeling. He had no idea what the hell a Changeling was, but apparently that may be what humans are called in this place. And quite clearly, they're not welcome. The blurry image of the pony was locked in Nathan's sight as he managed to get himself upright, slowly pushing himself upwards to flee again. However, that hit had taken too much out of him this time. The strain that was shot into his spine wasn't letting his legs work right. Every inch of him from the chest down wanted to turn off, to collapse on the ground and numb the damage. It was so tempting to just slip away into slumber, as the blood loss was making everything turn from blurry to delirious. Hazing lines folded into his vision, his hearing dulled as multiple colored bodies were approaching them. Blinking his eyes in attempts to clear them, he found the colored figures to not only be the guards catching up with them, but those mares he had seen in the hallway before. Great job stopping the changing rainbow dash. Keep him surrounded as I put a force field around him. If he tries to move, try and stop him. Nathan widened his eyes as his brain processed that. Looking around as a dome of some sort of lavender energy began to encase him from above. Forcing his legs to move, he bucked himself backwards, getting just outside of the shield's radius as it reached the ground. With him still free, the guards advanced on him, intending to tackle and shackle him but some pony else reached him first. Shining armor slammed into Nathan's side just as he got back on his feet, shoving him backwards a few feet before catching a sloppy right hook from the human. Bringing his elbow down onto his arm, he had broken the bone in two, forcing it at an unnatural angle. Horrendous cries of agony boomed from the human as he staggered from shining armor, grasping his broken arm's bicep. Hearing the revving of energy being collected, he looked back up at the well-dressed stallion, raising up his other hand just as Shining Armor's horn blasted a torrent of lethal magic at the human. The erupting power seared the skin off of Nathan's left forearm, garnering more screams as the guards behind Shining Armor hesitate. A few glanced at each other, the brutality unnerving them. Uh, our orders were to capture the changeling, right? Many of the patrons of the wedding caught up with every pony a shining armor slashed out Nathan's leg, dropping him to a knee. Princess Cadence gasped as she saw this, her hand coming up to her mouth in horror at what her newlywed husband was doing. Behind her, the royal sisters were in shock, stilled by the sight of the broken and bleeding target their guards were dispatched to apprehend. Even the elements of Harmony didn't know what to think, Twilight Sparkle most of all. She had never seen a brother this... well, this angry before. 
Sure, he was stern and upset with her when he blames the disguised chrysalis of being evil, but he would never go out of his way to be so aggressive, even as a guard of Canterlock Castle. He was a protector, a, a guardian. Not this. In Shining Armor's mind, there was nothing but static. Static, and the replaying memories of the manipulation and subsequent torture of mind control. No one had ever truly experienced the level of torment the groom had experienced. The way the changelings burrowed themselves into his mind was like a parasite worming its way into his brain. It trapped him there, in his own conscious, plucking thoughts and feelings away from him like ripping a warm blanket off of him on a cold winter night. The manipulation of changeling magic wasn't like an instantaneous alteration spell, it was slow, subtle, and painful. By Twilight's observations, the headaches he'd received all throughout the wedding preparations was the only evidence that something was wrong. Shining Armor never noticed before, but when total control over his body was achieved, he was imprisoned in hazy nightmares, reliving horrible moments in his life while all the lovely memories faded away. Chrysalis had sapped his love, and would have done the same with his life had things not turned out as they did. After all, he couldn't have done anything. He couldn't have done his job as a royal guard and continue shielding the ponies. Standing before Chrysalis, he was but a mute zombie, dumbly taking orders from the rancid queen. It was misery. And now here he stands, giving one of her disguised grunts their due retribution for all the pain they'd caused him. For all the pain they'd caused to Canterlots, the ponies there that he couldn't protect. Going after him and torturing his mind was one thing, but when innocent ponies and even guards died in the skirmish that came soon after, with families losing their precious ones to something so simple as feeding, Shining Armor could only see red. Wrapping a string of magic around the disguised changeling's neck, he pulled on it with all his might, strangling the straggler of the hive as he used another spell to try and rid of its disguise to show its true face. He only rose an eyebrow when it failed, his mind coming up with one or more excuses as to why. Perhaps this one was more in tune with his magic. Maybe in his blind rush to destroy this creature, Shining Armor was losing focus in his magic. Honestly, he didn't care. He just wanted this thing to suffer like he did. Kicking the human up in his nose, the bone behind it snapped as he fell onto his back. The string of magic dissolving as Shining Armor got on top of him. Taking it by the blue garbs at war, he slammed his head down against its face, headbutting it near its left eye. At first, the disguised bug struggled in his grasp, but as he continued to hammer away at its face with his forehead, the combined force of his stronger skull structure as well as the horn on his head beat the thing into submission, and with one less eye to see through. Shining Armor rose his head up to continue the assault, his intent clear as Nathan stared numbly back at him. Shiny, get off him! A pair of pink arms grabbed Shining Armor by his left, dragging him back as he threw his head again, barely missing the human as some of the guards came forth. Princess Cadence, along with them, held the senior guard back as the others rushed to Nathan, a medic leaning down to examine him. Shining Armor, stop it right now! You got him! He's not hurting any pony anymore! I'm not taking chances! You saw what they do! You've seen what they have done to Canterlot! They deserve to die! Some pony, help me! Several ponies ducked as Shining Armor's horn blasted more magic in Nathan's direction. The guards surrounding him ducking while the medic looming over the body was sweating, examining the damage done to him. Several points of injury was enough to leave a guard bedridden. Hell, he shouldn't even be able to get up from the two blasts of the pink ponies cannon. He doesn't look strong, but judging from the tightness of his muscle and how they connect to the bone, this changing was built to last. Bringing over his medical kit, the medic looked up and brought over a unicorn, instructing them to perform an reverse spell on the point of injury on Nathan's broken arm. The human stared upwards at the sky, his mind just barely clinging to consciousness as a concussion was savagely beaten into his face. He gurgled and choked on the blood that rose in his mouth, coughing lightly as the medical ponies worked. A hideous snap made him flinch as these ponies had righted his arm the bones sealing together with just a fracture left behind. His left eye socket was bloody and caved, the eye itself being in pieces that either lay splattered onto his cheek or drilled deeper into the socket. He could feel the medic poke into it, taking out the bits and pieces of his eye. It didn't hurt, not even a little bit. Was this... was this what dying felt like? 
The fingers of his skinless hand prodded the grass under them. It was warm and wet, as if he was blading himself a pool to float in. His remaining eye dully glanced to his side, seeing several colors wrestling with each other. Purple and pink clashed with white and blue, and multiple other whites were getting in the mix. Were these ponies fighting each other? Nathan felt a jolt of electricity surge through him, pushing his consciousness back to the forefront as he let out a large gasp. Oh, he's still awake! He's awake! Stop the treatment! The medic stood back up, ushering the unicorn back as Nathan looked around. His heart was beating hard and fast, the adrenaline giving him the strength to finally move. Grasping the dirt with his fixed arm, he rolled himself to the side, throwing up a small lump of blood and mucus as he pushed himself to his knee. A sting of immense pain coursed through his left leg, the gash that groom pony made with a knife cutting deep into his knee. Putting his left foot on the ground, he struggled to pull himself up. Hobbling on his left only, he fell against the hedge beside him, breathing hoarsely as he realized his lack of sight in his left eye. Reaching up, he grimaced at the contact, pulling his fingers away as he panted. Oncoming panic was inevitable. His self-imposed mission of escape was creeping back into his head. He had to leave. He had to get out. They've already done this to him. What else will they do? He'll look out! A beam of magic the size of Nathan's torso slammed into his chest, knocking the wind out of him and throwing him through the many, many hedges that made up the maze. The powerful and searing hot energy had hit him like a semi-truck, pushing him out of the courtyards and through the castle's outer walls. Falling downwards as the magic subsided, Nathan felt his mind slip once more as he crashed down into the moat. The cold water brought him back for a brief moment, but only just as he drifted downstream. Looking ahead as the current became stronger, Nathan only had time to register the waterfall a foot away from him before he went over. Soaring downwards, the young man turned his gaze up, the ringing in his ears being the only noise he could comprehend as the ground was coming up fast. Several of those white ponies were flying after him. Even that blue mare from before was speeding towards him at breakneck pace, but it wasn't fast enough. With a loud crash, Nathan felt his back give out as he hit the river below and submerged into the water. Not gonna lie, there were some parts that got me to cringe a little bit, especially with the skin and the hand and the eye thing. Oh, God. That... Oh. But I like that because in a way, it gives you more immersion. Anywho, let's get on to our tough donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zar630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Orion, and Kalidus. Magivic, Jock, Lucio, Darkseid, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.